Hello and welcome to Piano Shack with me, Woody. Thank you very much for tuning in. So today, yes, today in one day, I'm going to attempt to learn Bach's Prelude in C major. Relatively simple song. I think this will be fairly easy to learn, but hard to master. But let's see what we can accomplish during one day. Also, I'm going to try and memorize the song. I think this is gonna be the challenge so that I can do a performance when my family come home from school and work later on today. Okay, so I'm not trying to show off or boast about my capabilities. I'm not even sure right now, I have no idea actually, if I'm able to pull this challenge off and learn this song in one day. I'm just as curious as perhaps you are. But what I'm hoping to demonstrate and inspire you is that it is possible to learn a beautiful new song and add it to your repertoire if you commit, put your mind to it, and work quite hard. I'm sure that not everybody uh, watching this is capable of learning the entire song, but I'm sure many of you are capable of playing the introduction anyway, which in itself is really satisfying and wonderful to play. And this is a beautiful song. I think I'm gonna to demonstrate to you now what the song is. I can play a little bit of it by ear. You're gonna recognize this, one of the most well-known classical pieces out there. Okay, so this is Bach's Prelude in C major from the first book of the Well-Tempered Clavier, written 1700 or something, so a good 300 years ago. I can play a little bit of it by memory because I know this song so well. I've listened to it so many times in the last week and of course, I think everybody's familiar with this song. It goes like this. This is about where, as much as I can play by ear, I think it goes to the, something like that. But let's go over to the computer. I'll play through the piece. We'll analyze it together. And I'll try and figure out how I'm going to memorize this in just a few hours before the family comes home. Okay, here we go. Let's do a breakdown of this song. See if we can figure out some patterns, shapes, chord progressions to make this easier to memorize because it is, in its entirety, 35 bars. Now the reason I was able to play this by ear earlier there, I'm in the key of C here, the reason I was able to play it earlier by ear is because I've listened to this song so many times in the last week or so leading up to this challenge. I've listened to many YouTube recitals, recitals on Spotify, so I know this one pretty well. And hearing it in your mind is the most important step to learning it, I think, so your brain knows what chords are coming up and also you'll be able to tell if you're playing a wrong note or not because you've got that memory, that oral memory of the song in your mind. So that's really important to listen to this many, many times. Um, we're going to take the first line here then and it uh, starts off with a C major triad. And first, let's identify the pattern. We have a... One, two with our left hand, and then one, two, three with our right, and then one, two, three again, holding down the left one. And that repeats twice for every bar. And the pattern is the same throughout the entirety of the song, except for the very, very last bar, which is an ending. There's some suggested fingerings here, which I'm pretty much ignoring and just playing what feels comfortable for me. I'm not a professional concert pianist, guys. <laughs> Pianist, be careful how you say that. So, one, two. One, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three. That's just, I'm just playing the first bar over and over again to get that pattern. And you can see how I'm holding this down as well for the entirety of this phrase. So this is one phrase and then it just repeats and that's the same all the way throughout the piece. You can, uh, let me point. So with your left hand. Then we're gonna get to the second bar where we change chords. And throughout here, throughout the entire piece, it's characterized by very slight adjustments to the shapes you're playing with every bar. There's nothing too dramatic going on here, so that's a helpful way to try and remember this as well. So you've got
got to get that pattern down. And this is a pretty basic pattern, guys. I think anybody can play this pattern, this shape, no matter if you're an advanced, intermediate or beginner pianist. Let's put this theory to the test. Let's see if Miss Woody can play the first couple of bars. She's never touched a piano keyboard before and was a rather reluctant student, but we persuaded her to give it a try. That's it. Oh, one more time. Very good. And then with this hand, we're going to play these three. She did very well with the hand and finger coordination and was able to perform the first bar pattern after a minute or two. However, she couldn't shift it up and play the D minor, which did surprise me a bit. Maybe this is harder than I thought. Perfect. And then we're going to change. Then we're very good. Then we're going to change one more thing. My son also had a go, but got frustrated with his finger strength and dexterity. Oh, excellent. Camera boy, do you want to have a quick go? It's hard to stop that. Move up. Move up a bit more. <laughs> so far then, mixed success. Let's call in my wild card. My godson Jack lives nearby and has learned the intro to Bohemian Rhapsody just by watching YouTube videos. So he's obviously got some skills, he's determined, and he's got good taste. Let's introduce him to Bark. Jack nailed it. Well done, mate. Yay, well done. And even Eddie, after a few more minutes practice, got it down. Well done, everybody. Okay, I'm not sure how conclusive that was one way or the other, but remember, we did just practice for three or four minutes. If you were to spend half an hour to an hour practicing this shape, which is what you need to do if you're a beginner, uh, don't be discouraged. You're gonna need to spend a couple of hours getting your fingers, the coordination, and you might just be a one-fingered player as well right now. That's okay. This is a great way to build up the independence of all of your fingers. What we're basically doing here is playing broken chords, arpeggios, which is one of the very best exercises to uh, improve your piano playing technique. So you could just do this pattern over and over again, then you can do it in your sleep, because you really need to feel that rhythm, that pulse. other things to think about. Now we're getting ahead of ourselves here a little bit, but you want to be holding down those two chords for the entirety of the shape and perhaps accenting the first note, the, at the note at the top there, that's our melody note. We're not just going to play the notes on the score here. I want to add my own emotions, my own feeling, my own personality to this performance. So I'll choose whatever feels right for me. We're about here. I can see also it's suggesting, I think that's what this symbol means. It's been a long while since I read music. This means we should be depressing the pedal for each of these phrases. Now I saw uh, Lang Lang uh, describing how he plays this piece and he actually plays it more authentic to how Bach would have played it. When Bach wrote this song, pianos weren't even invented. How amazing is that? So uh, he's playing on a harpsichord or a clavier, clavichord. Don't think they had sustained pedals, <laughs> might be wrong, but it probably would have sounded more like this. Which sounds nice as well. I don't even have a sustained pedal hooked up at the moment, but that would allow you to get a very smooth, dreamy quality to it. Anyway, we need to move on. Let's uh, analyze what's going on here. So the very first bar is a C major triad. Voice like this, two notes in the left hand, three notes in the right. Then we're gonna play this chord, which is a beautiful D minor seven voicing. There's the D minor, but with a seventh, the C is in the bottom. 
absolutely beautiful. Then we move on to here where I have a This guys is a G7 chord with the third in the bottom. So first inversion G7. I think we could call that. We've gone to this bow. Ah, we're back to the start. This is what we had at the very start. So that's a bit of repetition, which is going to help us remember all of this. Here we go. This is about as far as I could do with the playing by ear. Whoops, sorry. <laughs> Whoop. Okay, here we have a beautiful A minor. A basic A minor chord with a lovely spread open voicing. And without the A in the bottom, but the C. So this is a first inversion A minor. And one thing I noted right off the bat there, we're starting in C. Then we're going to go to the D minor. And then we're going to go here to the G7. Let's play that one more time. You probably recognize that. This is our 2-5-1 chord progression. You may have thought, I did anyway, that this is something that the jazz guys, uh, the gospel guys use a lot in their music, pop music, sophisticated pop music, you'll hear these. 2-5-1s all over the place, but Bach was doing it hundreds of years ago. I think that's pretty awesome. So we got C, D minor, G, C, a minor, that's the sixth chord. We're just diatonic right now in the key of C major. Here we go. It's a lovely D7, which is going to pull us to the G. I mean, this is a five to the one progression, so this is pretty poppy, jazzy soul stuff here going on. hear how beautifully that resolves. This is just a C major 7 with a 7th in the bottom. Moving down to here. This is an A minor 7. Yeah, just a regular A minor 7 here. Regular D7. There's lots of two to the fives, five to the ones going on here. Nothing strange at all. Quite simple harmony. So this is relatively simple harmony. We've just done the entire first page. Nothing there was too advanced or complicated, but it sounds absolutely wonderful. Now it's going to start getting a bit tricky here on page two. Let's take a listen and see what we've got going on here then. So. Um, So now we're starting to introduce some notes that are outside the key of C. We've got a B flat there, C sharp there. We've had this F sharp earlier actually before as well when we did the C, the D7. But now we're really getting a little bit outside here. This is some kind of, what is this? Diminished chord. That's resolving lovely to this D minor. This is a D minor, although the F is on the bottom. It's interesting to see Bach doing all of this. This is something I've been uh, playing a lot when I play my gospel music. You often have the third in the bottom, which is exactly what Bach is doing here. Gospel came from Bach's uh, spiritual music, I suppose. Here we have another diminished. Which is resolving here. Let's see, get the shape right. <laughs> Listen to that one more time. Ah, it's wonderful. That's a F 
major seven with a seventh in the bottom again. We've seen that a lot now. And this is bringing us to the a lovely D minor seventh. And now on the second part of the second page. And we're going to jump down here. Here's the biggest jump. So far, it's been very small changes in between the bars, but now we're going to jump. Where was I? All the way down here. And you can see we're gradually working downwards as well. That's another way to remember this piece, perhaps. There's a pattern there, a shape. We started here. And now, all of a sudden, we're down here. setting us up. You can hear it coming. <laughs> oh yeah! So this is an interesting, this is something you hear in modern pop music, jazz, blues. A regular C triad going to a C seventh. And this is a secondary dominant which is pulling us down to the one. Voiced here as a major seventh. Wonderful. Now we've got some interesting stuff coming on here. No, I'm playing that wrong. Here we go. C in the left hand. Wow, we're really outside now. I'm not sure what the two chords were there, what those two chords were. We had this is going to be tough to remember now because we're getting a little bit outside the key here. It's getting... We've left the diatonic key of C major. That's a beautiful chord. Then we got this. Slightly different shape as well. We're just playing three notes, consecutive notes. Now we're on the last page, so we're nearly there. It's going to get simpler from here on. So there. Back to G. Now we're in home territory again. So we went slightly outside here in the last line, which introduced a lot of tension to the piece. A little bit of conflict there with the chords. And now ah, we're back home again. So we've got the resolution here. Here we are. That's a lovely chord. That's a sus G, G sus seven. We got the seventh there, but instead of playing the third, I'm playing the C. It's a very nice cadal sound. Cadal, I'm not, I can't remember the word I'm looking for. But it wants to go there. Let's see if it does that. And it does. You could just hear your ear was pulling you there. And now we've got some interesting stuff coming up. Let's see if we can get these. Wow. I don't know what chord that is. We've got a G with a raised five and a... What would that be? Major seventh. Wow, weird, weird thing there, but absolutely beautiful. Listen to that resolve. You've got tension there and the release. Let's play these two bars again, just the chords. Oh, that's just so nice. That's almost uh, a goosebumps moment there. We're onto the last two lines here. Just a G7 there. Down to C here. No, hey, where are we? Uh, there. So we got a C seven, which is pulling us to F. But Bach doesn't give us that. I can see he gives us this. This is where the pattern stops. OK, 
Okay, that was the piece in its entirety. Not too bad if you break it down, but there are some places here, here where I'm going to struggle. First page, I think, is relatively simple. I can hear that in my mind and kind of play what I'm hearing because it's all within the same key of C major. It's all um, basically the white notes except for the D7 here. Second page is getting a bit far out with some diminished stuff here going on. And I could probably play this within an hour if I had the sheet music in front of me. It's actually memorizing this that I think is going to be the challenge for me today. Um, yeah, so that's, this page is going to be tricky, the second page. But still a lot of C's. Whoops. This is going to be easy enough. It's conventional harmony. A bit of, not too bad because it's quite distinctive, easy to remember. This page, I think the last page is going to be a bit of a struggle as well when we've got these. Actually, one thing I'm seeing right now, actually, if we look at the bass notes, this is going to help me a great deal. It's the same root. See if that continues. Yeah. So I can pretty much forget about the bass note. That's the same all the way through the last page. And we're staying really around G, G sus 7, G7, C. So maybe not too bad. Only one thing for it, guys. I've got to spend the whole day practicing. I'll do it first with the sheet music. Then I'll see how far I can get without the sheet music and just have it as a bit of a cheat whenever I get lost in there. I'll come back to you a little bit later on with a status update. Okay, so I think I've got that diminished part down now. It starts off here. into the challenge now and I think I've got this part on the third page with all the sus chords sussed out the sus chords sussed out I like that um, we started yeah the part where we were just playing the G constantly the pedal tone with the left it starts here maybe And a nice mellow grand sound here on the Yamaha, which I'm going to be using. I hope you like that as well. And another thing I'm trying to focus on now is getting this top note to sing. I want to get that melodic singing feel to the song. I'll try and demonstrate that for you. Exaggerating a little bit. Night is falling then, which is pretty early this time of year where I live. It's about two o'clock actually, it's already getting dark outside. But I've made some progress today. I've been pretty chilled about this challenge actually. I've even been out for a little run, done a bit of Christmas shopping. And I have been able to play this song through once from start to finish, completely from memory. Although it wasn't a particularly expressive performance or anything, because most of the time I was in a blind panic about which chords and notes were coming up next. Let's bring the piano into the studio so that I can capture the audio and the MIDI in the best possible quality for the recital this evening, for what it's worth. Now I have been practicing this for a little bit longer. It's about uh, six o'clock in the evening now. I can play the song more or less all the way through, maybe two out of three times. So we just have to see how it goes this evening when the family are watching the performance and when the cameras are rolling. Here goes nothing.
Wow. Det är ingen som la av. participating in the video. You're welcome. You're welcome. What took the wrong Lawton? Okay, so that was enjoyable but far from perfect. The stress was on me there actually because the wifey wanted to go and watch a TV program that was starting exactly at eight o'clock. So I had one take to perform this song and that's why I was a bit stressed. And looking back on it, there were a couple of wrong notes. You maybe noticed, you probably did. Also, I felt that the performance was somewhat robotic. Um, just because I wasn't really warmed up, the cameras were rolling and there were people here chuckling <laughs> on my left. So uh, I feel I didn't really get that sing-song melody that I was striving for earlier. But I was quite happy with the dynamics, the loud and the quiet passages, and I'm pretty pleased that I made it through to the end. Actually, I'm very, very pleased and proud of myself that I was able to do this under just one day. And also the most fun part of it was watching my son uh, today who was inspired to follow in my footsteps and continue the lesson that we did yesterday where he was trying to learn this song. And he spent a good half an hour in here with the piano. He figured out the first four bars of the piece and was able to play it quite well and came out of the room absolutely bursting with enthusiasm and joy had so much fun when he actually figured out how to play it and was uh, really happy and wanted to learn more. So that was really great. And once again, the point of this video is not for me to, to boast or show you what I can achieve. I'm hopefully aiming to inspire those of you watching this 
download this sheet music or watch some of the other YouTube tutorials and figure this out, even if you can't play the entire song. And if you're an average pianist like me, there's no reason why you can't. But if you're a complete beginner, just try and work out the first four bars or so. It's very distinctive, a recognizable piece, and you'll get a lot of satisfaction playing it. Now, when I'm jamming here on the channel, I'm normally just doing improvisations around uh, random chord progressions or some blues stuff, boogie woogie, or some New Orleans grooves or something like this. But I can tell you, playing a piece like this is much more satisfying and rewarding and enjoyable. I couldn't believe at times what beautiful sounds were coming from the keyboard as I was pressing my fingers down. It was just an unbelievable experience. I've played classical music before, but I've kind of forgotten the uh, enjoyment you can get from it. So I really do encourage you to have a go. And if you do feel inspired to have a crack at this yourselves and play some of this piece, then please do let me know in the comments. I would love, really love to hear from you. Thanks ever so much in advance. So that's it. I promised to round off with two pieces that are in progress. Here are two more Bach pieces. I've never ever studied the music for these, so I'm just playing them by ear and improvising. You'll be able to hear this and the Bach and the classical music purists will probably hate me for this. But let me just tell you, this is work in progress. I am going to now study these two pieces and within a couple of weeks or maybe a month, I'll give you a performance with a proper version these two tunes. I'm going to play for you Jisoo Joy, If Man's Desiring, and I'm also going to play uh, Air on the G string, two absolutely beautiful songs, compositions, you shouldn't really call them songs, apologize if I've been saying songs throughout the video, two totally beautiful compositions, and uh, yeah, obviously my versions are a bit ropey, but we'll figure that out eventually. Thanks ever so much to Jack, uh, the wife, Eddie for participating in this video. Remember to check out the YouTube channels of Jack and Eddie. I'll leave links down in the description. Okay, here are the recitals of the other two Bach pieces that we're going to learn pretty soon. try and learn this song for next time. Until then, thanks ever so much for watching, liking, subscribing. I'll see you next time. Cheerio.